So we're checking out the AM Crest 8 megapixel 4K Ultra HD camera. They didn't send this to me. I bought this with my own funds since I'm upgrading all of my cameras in the home and I needed a particular camera with a little wider angle view and this was a 2.8 millimeter camera along with the 4K. So the few features that I liked are the 384 by 2160 of course and they claim 164 feet of night vision along with allowing up to 128 gig SD card. It has a 112 horizontal degree view. It is IP67 of course being an outdoor camera and a huge thing is being powered over Ethernet which that's pretty much a requirement for me with all of my outdoor cameras being that you have to run wire to them anyway so we might as well be running power over Ethernet. It does allow H.265 but with I'll be using this with Blue Iris, so we'll be using this with H.264 since we use the GPU assist encoding with Blue Iris, and H.265 throws it all to CPU, I believe. And yes, the camera does have a mic, so you can listen. Now you cannot talk back; it doesn't have a speaker, but it does have a mic, so you can record the audio in your video. Now, if you haven't watched my video on the real link 5 megapixel cameras, those still are great cameras. I've been putting several of them around the home. But, of course, I did want to try out something a little different. I heard that the Amcrest was a great camera. And this one allowed me to have 4K. And there's not really an option I found with the real links to have a 4K camera that you don't have to use their DVR. Now, to keep that in mind, these being PoE cameras, and we've talked about this before, is using VLANs to separate your cameras from your regular network. So the way to do that is if you are buying some hardware such as a PoE switch to power any cameras, make sure you do get a managed switch. The managed switch will allow you to use the virtual LANs to segment off your different ports in your network so you can not isolate the cameras if need be. If you're using say a brand of camera that just you don't trust and you want to separate it from your network. Now there are several different ones that I've used in the past. I've used some simple little switches that weren't managed. Now one switch I'm using now for my network is the Netgear 24 port PoE switch. It does have just 12 ports but it does cover my ubiquity access points along with my cameras that I'm hooking up to it since it has 100 watts of output. I'll go ahead and leave a few different choices that I've looked at and researched for power over Ethernet switches. And I'll, of course, I'll leave those links in the description of the video below. So I have had a few people ask, hey, you talk about the ubiquity access points all the time and how great they are for IoT devices and getting great Wi-Fi in the home. And they are just a great value. And they are. I really love my UniFi access points. Now, with their camera line, I just didn't find that same wow factor that I did, such as with their access points. The price point was a little high, the quality just wasn't there for me, and being locked into their software just wasn't what I wanted to do. And given with Blue Iris, it's a found it's a great software, and I can incorporate many different brands and types of cameras, and it's very flexible, which kind of like the whole home automation home assistant thing is just want things to be flexible and not locked into one ecosystem so with that said let's just go check out the camera so what's included in the box you'll get your weatherproof connection for your ethernet and you'll get your mounting screws and sheetrock anchors in case you're putting in sheetrock or some other type of may say masonry or whatnot plus you do get your template for drilling any holes if needed now one thing is different about this camera is it does use a little different security type bit to mount and tighten using this screw hole in the front but you just simply unscrew it and the camera does come apart and allow you to mount it up to the wall or whatever you're using it's very similar in size to the real link camera as you can see They just have a little different. This one has multi LEDs around the side where this one has the one large infrared LED in the front. Pretty simple. Same style camera that gets mounted up and you can mount it in various scenarios whether you hide the wire in the hole or you run it outside the camera when you mount it on the ceiling or the wall. 
it mounts pretty much like any other camera that you've seen we're going to be using the power over ethernet but it does have the option to power it externally if you like but of course we're just going to use the power over ethernet option since it makes it real simple so let's go get this mounted up so if you want a full detailed video of actually running the wire and mounting a camera up you can check out the rio link five megapixel camera review i did it will be the same as this one this one has the same type of plate where you attach the four screws and mount the plate under the eave and then attach your ethernet cable with the weatherproof jack and then you mount the camera up and tighten the front face once you get it put in the position that you like. So once you've mounted it up, and I would highly suggest to assign a static IP or a reserved IP to your camera because you're gonna to wanna to assign that into Blue Iris and Home Assistant or Motion Eye or whatever type of software you're gonna assign it to. You don't want that IP address changing in, like during a reboot or a power outage or something like that. So definitely consult your router and assign it a reserved IP. So one thing I will say right off the bat that I do not like about this camera is the web interface. The web interface, you have to use Internet Explorer because of their ActiveX. Now they do have instructions and they do walk you through step by step in the manual of how to install other browsers and other plugins, but I couldn't seem to get it to work with Chrome and so I just sucked it up and went with Internet Explorer and it does work and allows you to use everything but I don't like to download different software and install it for different cameras it should just work in the web I mean after all the much cheaper Rio links they have that working in Chrome without any plugin to download or install so hopefully Amcrest can get this worked on and get a great web UI without having to download any software but once you get it set up, we're not having to use the web UI much. So let's go ahead and log in. Since I only have 1080p cameras, this will be a 1080p stream. You're not going to see the total quality of the 4K video. I will leave a link of some video files that I've taken straight from the SD card and uploaded them to YouTube. Now YouTube may compress them with the 4K video, but that's kind of beyond my control. I'm just going to upload the direct videos to YouTube and I'll leave that link. So if you want to look at some stock footage in 4K, you can take a look at that on this camera. So once you're into the web UI, it is pretty simple. The live one comes up. You do have the option for the cloud storage, but I'm not going to be doing the cloud storage. I'm sure there's a charge for that. There are a couple buttons to use here on the top. You can go ahead and do a digital zoom. And if you want to zoom in on a particular area and you can draw a square on that and zoom straight into that particular area. You can take snapshots. You can do multiple snapshots. You can start a video recording and that goes down to your local computer. Comparing this to the real links that I've been installing, I really liked the configuration. You could get really granular down on the video and you could have multiple profiles set for day and night. And you can get down and change just about everything from the white balance to the day and night. You can turn down the infrared light. And one thing to note on this camera I really liked was there is just that one IR LED and you cannot visually see it which is huge compared to other cameras because normally you can see those little red ring of LEDs around it. This one you can't even see the camera LED at all with the naked eye. So in the video tab, of course you can do the H.264. You can also do H.265 along with changing and lowering the resolutions if you like. Of course you can add in different overlays if you wanted to block stuff out. You can change the channel titles, you can change the time, and you simply just drag all these around based on where you're not wanting to cover up action in the video. The audio settings pretty straightforward. Network, of course your TCP IP address, you want to set a static there. And the end all be all, what we'll be using is RTSP for connection to this camera. And it does also support HTTPS and you can also upload your own certificates to it if you want to put this out on the web, which I don't recommend doing that. Definitely put it behind a DVR and don't expose these cameras, uh, no matter the brand, to the internet is the safest way to go. Under events, you can go in and turn on the motion detection if you want to record to say an internal SD card. You can do audio detection to when there's different audio to enable that. To trigger an event and then there's other access where like say the SD card fails or there's something wrong with the network illegal access etc 
under storage, one thing you do have, if you're not going to be using this with a software NVR, you can actually just have it go to the SD card and or you can have it just do FTP or you can actually write out to a NAS on your network. So I do have a 32 gig SD card in here. I wanted to actually see the built-in DVR in the camera itself. And I haven't had any issues with it. And it is, you can see down towards the bottom, the little yellow lines, it is recording video. And you simply just pick down what the event you want and hit the play button and it'll play through. And it also does play with sound if you have sound enabled on the configuration. So you also have the ability to download the mp4 files straight from the SD card just by simply selecting the time you want and click the download button and it'll download the mp4 file straight to your computer just pretty cool and that's the files we're going to use to upload to the 4k video for the sample so it may actually be hard to depict this actually on the video itself but you can come up here and select the digital zoom and zoom in to one area being it is a 4k video I do like the zoom feature on it which I use that with Blue Iris and it actually is very cool to be able to zoom into an area since we only had a 1080p camera here before. And I will show the Hikvision video of what we had before here and then what we upgraded to. And you can see the different field of view angle compared to the two cameras given that this is a little wider, sort of like a fisheye style lens, but it's not that extreme. So the setup in Blue Iris is pretty simple. Just went through and I hit configure, added a new camera put in my IP address, gave it my username, and put in my password, and hit Find Inspect. It goes through, since it's on VIF, and pulls all the information for you and fills everything out so you don't have to go research and copy and paste anything and just click OK and I accept the defaults. And of course, we are using the hardware accelerated decoding and pops right in. So pretty cool, throw it in a blue iris, takes you seconds to throw it in, no crazy configuration in rock and roll. We're gonna check it out in the component in Home Assistant right quick. So in Home Assistant, it's stupid simple to throw it into your configuration YAML. All you need to do is have your IP address, user ID, password, and set your stream source to RTSP, and that's it. So in Home Assistant, I threw in a little card in one of my Lovelace tabs, and it's a simple little camera picture entity card, and it does stream live to it. So once you save it, it will stream straight from your camera and you can actually see in the card the video, the seconds are changing on the video itself. If you wanna have a larger picture, just click it. It does open up using the stream component, which is really cool that they've done all that work in Home Assistant to make it easy for the cameras. So all in all, it is a pretty cool camera. There's probably one of the cheapest options I could find that fit me for doing a 4K wide angle camera. Now, of course, I still probably will, I still like the real link five megapixels. You still can't beat those for the cost, but they do have a smaller viewing angle and they're only five megapixel, not the eight megapixel. So definitely if you find some other camera options that are in the 4K range and that aren't super expensive and exorbitant cost that can fit the regular home budget, Definitely share them with us in the comments down below. And if you're not already a subscriber, make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit that bell icon so you can catch our next video or live stream. And y'all take care.